Here is the Beitou 70 kilogram servo. It's 65 bucks on Amazon and it's a frequently returned item. And the reason it is frequently returned, I'm guessing, is because it cannot do 70 kilograms per centimeter. All right, I'm going to show you the unboxing and then at the end I'll show you the results. Here we go. Now in the Amazon reviews, I noticed one per, at least one person complained that all they got was plastic uh, arms. So what I did was use this screwdriver here and just kind of etched into this. And this is definitely aluminum. The thread here at the end of the arm is an M3 by 0.5 millimeter pitch. Here, an M4 screw fits really nice. M5 is too big for these mounting holes. About 0.88 inches to the uh, end, end screw here. The thread going into the servo output here is also an M3 by 0.5 millimeter thread. It comes with this screw here. Here are the dimensions of the servo. These four screws come out in the corners with a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. There are gaskets. There's a thin gasket that goes around here. This is for the waterproofing. There's also an O-ring right here. You can see the conformal coating added here to the electronics to help waterproof them in case there is some kind of water that gets in here. And these gears look pretty nice. All stainless steel, steel construction. And you can see some lubricant on them. One thing that surprises me about this servo is it seems to be continuous rotation and the limits are set electronically. I don't know if that's a standard for new servos or not. This old uh, servo here, it's limited physically. There's a physical limit inside of here. Whereas this one, it's just free to rotate. It's hard to turn with one hand, but it'll rotate a full 360 and keep going. The idle current just sitting here is about 51 milliamps. If I turn the radio on, start moving this around here, I'll just do some simple movements. We get up around around 200-ish milliamps. We're at 5.2 volts, even though these are 1.2 volt cells and there's four, I just charged these so the voltage is a little high. I switched the multimeter over to 10 amp mode, and it's a nice little multimeter, I'll put the link in the description. So here you can see 50 milliamps doing nothing, just sitting here, no load. Now one concern I do have is, say I move this quickly. Sometimes it gets up to about almost half an amp. You know, it said 0.4 amps there. As I load this thing and try to move it, I'll show you. Inside, this is an old receiver. And this thing will go up to uh, like 6.5 volts. I think it's, yeah, it says here 4.5 to 6.5 volts. Well, I'm going to open this thing up and show you. There's a trace here on the PCB of this thing inside. And as the current increases, it's going to have to flow through the trace. And that's a concern if there's too much current. So here's what I mean by too much current in the trace. We have our setup here. And the power is distributed down here, 
it's kind of hard to see this, but these traces here are only like, you know, a millimeter, millimeter and a half wide. So the power has to go down the, tr down the pin, through the trace, and then up the other pin. And the concern is, as the load increases and the current increases, or as the voltage, as I put a higher voltage battery on here, this servo can take up to 8.4 8 volts. It'll uh, increase the current and burn out the trace and ruin the board. Here's the first loaded test, eight and a half pounds, one gallon of water. We're loaded here statically drawing 100 milliamps, same voltage, 5.2 volts. What happens if we move this up and down? Handles it, no problem. Pink is about 1.4 amps. Alright, here's half a cinder block at 19 pounds. And this is the first time this is struggling. We're still at 5.2 volts. And the uh, just current sitting there is 190 milliamps. And I try to move it. It'll go down, but not up. I don't even know if it'll go up. Yep. I have to put my hand and assist, assist the cinder block like that. I just put my hand on here. Well, I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed by this servo. I expected it to hit the, well, not this high because we're at 5.2 volts, a little over the 4.8 volts, but I expected to be able to hit something like 762 ounce inches of torque, but it's not really getting anywhere near that. I mean, the good news is it can hold the cinder block statically like this. But the bad news is I have to hold the cinder block quite a bit for the servo to bring it up. Like, it can't handle this weight dynamically. Statically, it's okay. Oh, man, it's struggling with the 14 pounds of sand as well. It's... I'm going to get back, like, not even, get, like, halfway back. This is about the most I'd expect to get out of this setup. It's a vise I had laying around, 7.5 pounds plus 3.5 pounds of water. And this actually works. It struggles a little bit, but it can do the full range of motion. It wants to come back and not quite make it back to center. But it will lift. So we're going to give this one a check mark here. And that's about the max it can do. I There's a big discrepancy between what this can actually do. And at 4.8 volts, I believe it was rated for this, 55 kilograms per centimeter, which is... 762 ounce, ounce, ounce inches of torque, so it's like, you know, this is less, le less than a quarter of that. Well, I've decided to do one last experiment here in an attempt to get more current flowing. I've wired the servo directly to the battery, so we have the plus going here, and then we have the minus coming over here, and then the signal goes to here. So the trans the uh, receiver gets its own power which comes from the split off and then the servo gets its own power and then there, here's the signal. So the idea here is to be able to send more current to the servo and it's actually working. From what I can tell it's working we're able to lift the 14 pound one gallon of sand thing. So with direct wiring it can do this. The gallon of sand. I mean it's just barely able to handle this though. If I put any kind of weight on this it will not lift it up. 
So there you go with a little bit of rewiring. It's possible to get more out of the servo since you don't have to route through the receiver. Kind of interesting in all the years I played with radio control stuff. I never tried that before. We're at 16 pounds and this is the max it can do. Might be able to do slightly more, but I think this is just about the max. <laughs> Got 8.4 volts going directly to the servo. And then the receiver has its own pack. And the grounds are tied together. Alright, we have 19 pounds hanging here. And it's pulling 8.4 volts, about 0.2 amps almost. Let's see what it can do. It can go down, get the center, but it can't go back up, so it's too much. Here are the results. The actual output, the max torque I got from this servo was 16.2 kilograms per centimeter which is less than a quarter of what it says it's rated for online. Um, now, it doesn't specify on the website on Amazon if it's static or dynamic, but frankly, it doesn't really matter. If, if you specify this torque, you know, I expect to move the servo, move the load with this kind of torque. Anyway, this is at 8.4 volts, directly wired, and here is the servo arm, 0.88 inches. Um, Here's the maximum lifting force I got out of it. This is the this is the lifting force in ounces, and then you multiply this by 0.88, and then here it is in kilogram centimeters. Hope you found this helpful. These are the real world results, and uh, I mean for 65 bucks, it's still quite a bit of torque. It's a small servo package, the size of a standard servo, slightly larger actually. But um, anyway, that's it. Take care.